Good evening, brothers and sisters, and welcome to a brand new class of Philippians chapter 2. It's the last class. Yes, it's the last class. And no, you're not You're not seeing a ghost. No, nope. you're, you're not seeing a ghost. It's the debut. <laughs> debut. And as he was telling, telling me before we started this, debut and farewell. Yeah, <laughs> mainly. <laughs> of Pastor Efren. Pastor, how are you? Great. And so grateful to be here with you guys. He's very excited, as you can yes. see. And <laughs> yes, he, want, he wanted to try this out. It's his debut in Farewell, like he said. <laughs> and also, brother, brother Jorge is here with me. How, how are you, Brother Jorge? Happy that we have <laughs> Pastor Efren here. <laughs> we're, we're happy to have him here as well, so he can join us in the conclusion, mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the final part of Philippians chapter 2, Humble Living in the Light of Jesus Jesus' humble example, and we're in the last section, Paul, Timothy, and Epaphroditus. And, and Pastor Efren calls him Epa. <laughs> because, <laughs> to uh, make it short. It, to make it short because it's, well, you know, you have Paul, Tim, and Epa. Epa, yeah. You know, Tim, <laughs> Timothy, and Epa. <laughs> so we're just going to, we're going to refer as Epaphroditus as Epa. Okay? <laughs> just, just FYI. So we left off last week right here. Your messenger and the one who ministered to my need. This brings that, this means that Epa or Epaphroditus brought a gift of financial support from the Philippians to Paul. And we can find this in Philippians 4, 18, which we're going to look when we go into chapter 4. But we see that Epaphroditus had a special gift. He was taking something very important to Paul, right, yeah. from the Philippians. So we see this gift as, as a financial support. It was yeah. a, an offering. We yes. see that. And we also see how, how important it was for Paul to always tell the churches, you need to not only support me, don't support me, but support the church in Jerusalem. Yeah. That was the most important thing. Support that church. Support the mother church if, mm -hmm. if, mm -hmm. if, if that's important. But why was it important to support uh, the church in Jerusalem, Pastor Efren? Okay, it, there was a, a need. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, too much poverty mm -hmm. because the persecution. Uh, but uh, there was many problems also. But uh, they were in need of not only prayers, also financial need. Yeah. And, and and also we can see right here that uh, uh, Epaphroditus, he was whatever. He was a really <laughs> good person. Yes. In something in who uh, the church in Philippi, the, Philippi, yeah, trust in him. Yes. For this, you know, to be. Uh, uh, their messenger uh -huh. to give him the offering to, to Paul. Right. Any, anything? No, I mean, it, it, it showed the trust that Paul sent him. Yeah. And then the trust was reciprocated by the, yeah. right. by the, um, by the Philippi Philippians. Philippians to be like, oh, Paul trusts this guy. Mm -hmm. You can trust him. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to see in, in later, in the later, uh, in the later verses that we don't see that type of trust from the Philippians towards Epaphroditus. As, okay. as we as we were saying so ministered that let's let's keep an eye on that word ministered has an idea of priestly service mm -hmm. when Epaphroditus has brought the the mon, the support money from the Philippians to to Paul in Rome he brought a sacrifice so we see here that not only he was a messenger who took financial money but we see that word minister means a sacrificial a sacrificial support or meaning a sacrifice if you will mm -hmm. right it was so important to take because as we're going to see in later later on we see a huge sacrifice from epaphroditus yes, yes. right and i hope you've been reading this 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 last section because we see that this, this is very important this word ministered is not only for the ministers yeah. no everybody can minister yeah let's let's remember the word minister uh, means servant, mm -hmm. and we are called to be servant. Yes, in, in Epaphroditus, it was a servant. Yes, like a Paul, like Jesus. Yes. And that is the example. Uh, you know, even to the church today, mm -hmm. we must be servants. servants. It's not the title to be minister, like be a big guy. You know, no, it's uh, to be someone ready to service others. Yes, mm -hmm. we need to be open to be servants. Yeah, I mean, overall. Paul is an excellent example of being a servant 
because he would be he was willing to sacrifice his health. Mm -hmm. Same with Epaphroditus, because he was willing to sacrifice his health because he was We're not we're not there yet, but yes. <laughs> they were able to sacrifice his health, the yeah. finance, whatever they needed, yeah. they took the time to help whoever they and as well the Philippians were making a sacrifice too. Yes. Give, giving them up their money. Yep. Yeah. Giving up this in love, mm -hmm. of course. And they were they were making a lot of sacrifices, financial sacrifices, mm -hmm. to just to give this money to Paul because yes. they knew of the danger mm -hmm. that he was in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So because you had heard him that he was sick, Epaphroditus was concerned because the Philippians learned of his sickness and worried about him. So how beautiful it is when a church worries about you. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, about a missionary. We were, we were talking about this in the, in the Spanish class. Yes. That a missionary, you never know which church is praying for that missionary who is out there mm -hmm. in the missionary field, who is out there in a different country. Yeah. But you never know that. You, but you know deep down inside that a church is supporting you, that the churches yes. are praying for you. And it, it's so beautiful. But it's... It, that's beautiful, but it's also sad that you know you're out there and your your own church is not even praying for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or they, they not even call you. Yeah. Or you don't know nothing about them, you know. I think it's really important for a missionary and, I mean, their family to know that there's a church supporting them. Yeah. Uh, praying for them financially or other ways. But not only a missionary, how about the members of the church? Mm -hmm. Yep. Knowing when, when, they're, when, not, when they're not here. Mm -hmm. How many of us worry about them? Hey, we missed you. Or send them a text message. Hey, or call them. Hey, we yep. missed you Sunday Sunday morning. I mean, the reality is that we're very lucky as a church that there's always someone like, oh, how are you? How we you missed the, yes. you know, yeah. whether, whether it be uh, Sister Dahlia or Sister Rachel or, yeah. who, or even our own pastors, they've, rec they've noticed it, yeah. that you're gone yeah. and you're gone and they're like, I hope everything is okay. I'm yeah. going to pray for them. I'm going to see if he's okay or whatever it is. They check up on you. We're very lucky as a church Absolutely. To, to have people like that. And it's, that's a form of ministry. And we're also, yes. we're also, we're also very blessed as a church to have a, a prayer team. Mm -hmm. Yes. Also, we, we were talking about this as well. And we're going to look at it at the later verses that we also fail to recognize people for mm -hmm. what they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, a man like Brother Cornelius, he was always praying. Yeah. Brother Cornelius is, is praying always for the church, for the for the pastors, for the leadership, and, and for the people. Yeah. yeah. And and sometimes we lack to recognize that. But if if Brother Cornelius is watching, we honor you yes. and we, we thank you for all your prayers yes. that you do. And may God bless you always. And may God so. give you strength and wisdom and mercy. And we yeah. love you. Brother Cornelius, Amen. we truly love yeah, we you. Do. So we recognize that 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 spirit that God has given you. Mm -hmm. So let us worry about one another, as the Philippians learned about the sickness and worried about Epaphroditus. Yes. One more thing, really quick. When someone, I mean, when every civic call from someone, yeah. it's making a big difference. Yeah, it makes a difference. If we call someone else also because it's not coming to church or we know it's sick, a little call, just a few seconds makes a really good difference makes a difference just a, a just a quick, quick call, call. Yeah. yeah just a quick call yeah so the return of epaphroditus would give them peace of mind and their valued brother that their valued brother was going to was in good condition it was also help uh, it will also help epaphroditus because he was longing for you all and was distressed he greatly longed to see the Philippian Christians. He wanted to see them. He desired to be with them. I mean, I think just in general, that's probably coming from Paul. Well, yeah. Paul probably was like, these are amazing people. people. They yes. are they are great Christians. They want, they they long for the heart. Yeah. Like Christ. Yeah. And they they love one another and they're always looking out for one another. And I'm sure I mean if you hear that. Like from my perspective, you kind of want to be like, oh, yeah. Yeah. how hard these people? I, I, I would, I would imagine that Epaphroditus, uh, we know that he was a messenger. Mm -hmm. He must have been to a lot of churches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for a church to long you, for a church to uh, wait for you, mm -hmm. or for you to go to a certain church that says they they truly uh, long me there, they're truly waiting for me there, they truly love me there, yes. it will be like, you're right, Paul. 
they're, they're truly waiting for me. I, I've sensed their love. I've sensed their... But what their... was the reason that yeah. this church was loving these Epaphroditus? Because he was a man of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A servant of God. Yeah. Not because he was only messenger. No, uh -huh. because his spiritual attitude. That's why. Yeah. It, when, when a church has someone like that, you know, uh, even like Paul or any servant, church will love, you know, that kind of people. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why we, the ministers, yeah. whatever it's a title, you know, could be pastor, minister, uh, facilitator, whatever. If we have a really holy attitude, good attitude, and, and the church sees that how we are um, working for God, yeah. they will love us. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So he greatly longed to see his Philippian Christians. And we truly long to see you on Sunday. So don't stay home. <laughs> right? So let's read verse 27. Who wants to read? Okay, don't, don't fight over who was going to read the scripture, okay? Uh, indeed, he was ill and almost, and almost died. But God had mercy on him and not on him only, but also on me to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Very well. 27 explains a preferred to sickness and his recovery. For indeed, he was sick almost unto death. The sickness of Epaphroditus was no small thing. Mm -hmm. It was almost unto death. It was that serious. Mm -hmm. Yet God had mercy on him and he recovered. Right? There is nothing to indicate in the text that this was a miraculous healing. But Paul still saw God's hand of mercy in Epaphroditus' recovery. So the sickness that he had was very, very, uh, it, was, it, was it was serious. serious. Something yeah. strong, yeah. It was something, it, it was something above, you know. Mm -hmm. He was close to dead. Yeah, he was about to die. Yeah. But what, what happened, Pastor Efren? You, uh, you, you, what happened? I know you. Well, you know, I, I love my translation. <laughs> I mean, my, my version. It says, yeah. and he certainly was ill. In fact, he almost died. But God, yeah. I love that but, but God <laughs> had mercy on him and also on me. So in this case, Ipa, let me call it Ipa. <laughs> he was sick, but there was people praying for him. Yeah. I think Paul was praying for yeah. him. Uh, the Philippians were praying for him. And God heard their prayer and healed. I mean, I mean, yeah, healed. Uh, he preferred it to us. And uh, he was close to die, but God did something in his body. God intervened. Yes. Mm -hmm. he, he came into the rescue. He came into yes. help. Yes. And you, you were mentioning that, Pastor Efren, in regards to that, that phrase, but God. But God, yes. You were mentioning that in, in, our, in, our, in our Spanish. Mm -hmm. And um, I was listening to you as you, as you were saying that. You said, but God, there's there's many times that God has intervened. Yes, yes. It, you, 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 and you even mentioned some examples with uh, Ephesians chapter two, mm -hmm. when it says we were dead in our sins and you know following the devil. But it says, but God that is rich in goodness. Let's say yeah. in every moment when God shows up, yeah, everything changes. It changes everything. We 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 need. You know, when, when God is intervening, let's say, uh, I don't know the, the right way to say it, but when, he's, when God is showing up in yeah. our life, everything changed. Everything, everything changed. could look bad, you know, going down. But if we pray to God, His mercy will come upon us right. and will help us, will save us. Absolutely. Wow. There's no word to express the hand of God, <laughs> the powerful hand of God yes. in His church. Yes. Jorge, how, how many how many but God moments have we had that that has that God has just intervened without us knowing about it? There's too many to count, to be honest. <laughs> and even just in, in regular life, to, even to the point that you don't even notice. It. <laughs> you know, you, you don't, don't even notice. You it. don't even notice. I it. dare to say, every <laughs> single day, God is intervening in our life. Yeah, every single day. When, and like you say, we we don't even notice. We don't notice it. Yeah, yeah for. For everything, like I mean, for all you know, the person that's driving next to you was mm -hmm. supposed to hit you. Uh huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or or whatever yeah. it may be. Or 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 for some odd reason, God intervened that you didn't leave your house at a certain time where there was a huge accident. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Many times we got a flat tire uh -huh. and we're complaining, but you don't know. I mean, we didn't know that God probably caused it because 
He saved it from an accident or something else. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Or he didn't he didn't make you pay that much or or buy that thing because he knew, yes. hey, you need to pay your rent. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, there's a lot of things like, and also another thing that I noticed about proprietors is, is also it was his purpose to get back to Paul. Right. Mm-hmm. That's right. it was get back to the Philippians actually. Yeah. yeah. Go go, go to, to go to, go to Philippi. Philippi and then, back, and then back to, to Paul, Paul and then back to Philippi. Yeah. That was God's purpose for him, and yeah. he knew. He knew that that was what he was called for. And, you know, he was sick. He was close to death. Of course. And he kept going. Yeah. So he knew that that was his purpose. And yeah. because he wanted to fulfill that purpose and do it all for God. Yes. That's another reason why God's like, I'm going to heal you because you have something to give. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like you mentioned, and, yeah. you know, in the Spanish class, uh, I think only in Philippians he's just he's named. Mentioned. Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, in this time, uh, he preferred to us. Uh, why? Because he was a really good man of God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think God is taking care of his servants. Yes. Mm-hmm. Does not matter the time. He's taking care of his servants. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we see this. We see this how God had mercy on him mm-hmm. and healed him. Right? So let's us show how ha- uh, I should have a sorrow upon sorrow. Mm-hmm. God's mercy to Epaphroditus was also mercy to Paul. Mm-hmm. Because we know his condition. We know that he was in, in, in prison in Rome. Yeah. We know he we, was ill. <laughs> we, and, and we know that, that he might have been ill or, or mm-hmm. something was going on. We know that he was about to die, mm-hmm. uh, Paul. He was ready to be executed. Mm-hmm. And we see that if Epaphroditus died right there, mm-hmm. he might not have been able to want to keep going. Exactly. It might have been another weight on him saying, why? Mm-hmm. Why him? You know. Yeah. But we see that it gave him mercy as well mm-hmm. because God showed him mercy. How many times has God showed him mercy even beyond other people's, other people's sickness? Yeah. You know, yeah. when, for example, uh, Pastor Efren, when, when, imagine if, if, uh, if, if your son was sick and you were, you were there and, and, and you feel bad mm-hmm. and you know that you're believing in God and you're asking God for mer- and, and for, for healing. Mm-hmm. But God shows mercy. That mercy also is applied to you. Oh, yes, yes. Because not only because I, I, I could see my son, you know, yeah. getting healed, but also because peace in my heart. The, yeah, exactly. And, and I say, Lord, thank you for what you're doing. That, that is exactly the peace that Paul received. Yeah, exactly. That, that was like, okay, he's well. I could be at peace. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? So, if Epaphrodites had died, Paul would have had sorrow upon sorrow because a valued brother, worker, and soldier for Christ was no longer on this earth. Yes. Right? So, he would have also had sorrow upon sorrow because Epaphrodites became sick when he beca- he came on behalf of the Philippians to minister to, to Paul's material and spiritual needs while Paul was in, pr- was in prison in Rome. Right? So... Let us go to verses 28 and 30. Who wants to read that? Me. Okay. 28 and 30. Okay, it says, uh, where are you? 28. <laughs> so, I am, so I am all the more anxious to send him back to you, for I know you will be glad to see him, and then I will not be so worried about you. Welcome him in the Lord's love and with great joy, and give him the honor that the people like him deserve. For he risked his life for the work of Christ, and he was at the point of death while doing for me what you couldn't do for far away. Very well. Paul's instructions to the Philippians and how to receive Epaphroditus as he returns to them. Mm-hmm. I sent him the more, uh, the, the more eagerly. Paul was eager to reunite the Philippians with his beloved brother Epaphroditus and remind the Philippians to give him a proper recognition when he returned. Mm-hmm. Hold such men in esteem. We were talking about this, and we mentioned Brother Cornelius earlier, mm-hmm. but we were talking about this that sometimes the church lacks or the church does not recognize men that give it all to God. Yes, I, I believe in the church. Uh, normally people see, you know, pastor or uh, other, let's say, uh, a men's leader, women's leader, but what about those that are working behind, you know, this, this the scenes. scene, yeah, that we don't recognize them. Like you say, Brother Cornelius, he's a man that 
we don't see it too much in the church working, but he's a, pr a man of prayer. Mm -hmm. and, and so and with Brother Cornelius, is, sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, one anecdote that I'm going to add is he, when my dad had his heart attack. Right. Doesn't know my dad. Was like, I hope your dad is okay. I will be praying for him. Right. He really? doesn't. He does. Uh, someone he doesn't know. I mean, I don't talk to Brother Cornelius all that much, but he. He's there praying for everyone yes. in the congregation, mm -hmm. including the family that's not even around you. Right. So, so that, that that's what's the most important thing. Yes, we need to recognize men or women working for God. Right. You know, honor them, even uh, praying for them. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like in this case, Paul was telling, you know, the church, hey, please try him yeah. in the way he deserves. Yeah, treat treat him, uh, recognize him yes. in the way... Hold them in such esteem, like yes, the word yeah, says. Yes. Right? So, probably the Philippians sent a preferred says not only as a messenger, but also to be a personal attendant or assistant yes. to Paul in behalf of the Philippians. Mm -hmm. Right? So, when illness prevented a from doing this, he may have seemed like a failure, perhaps even a malingerer. Malingerer, thank you, Jorge, in the eyes of the Philippians. That's why Paul wrote to them, it is true that he yes, was sick, yes. right? Because the Philippians thought that he wasn't sick. Some people believe he Some was people, not really sick at all. Yeah. How many people believe that we're not, we're, we're not even sick in church? Yeah. And they're, they're like, oh, he might have missed because he wasn't that yeah. sick. I, I think <laughs> that's why Paul said he was close to die. Yeah. He was really sick. And he's going back to you guys. Please try him really well. Yeah. He did. God's work. He did the work that you asked him to come yeah. and help me out. So I'm sending him back to you. So yes. that's exactly what he yeah. was trying to tell him. Like he almost died on your behalf to, yes. Yes. to, to help me <laughs> yes. out. So you should give him back the esteem that yeah. he gave. He he brought me the min. He ministered from you, me. right? Yeah. Let's right. remember that the work of a prophet a whatever epaphroditus <laughs> yeah he was not only messenger he was uh you know going with the philippians going back to paul bringing the offering but also he was a servant i'm pretty sure he was a minister yeah he, he was. was a preacher yeah he was a uh let's say an elder probably uh for them uh, i know he was young guy but i mean like a pastor i i want to i want to say that he was he was young Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's what I that's what I that's what I treat. Yeah, when I mean an elder, I mean like uh, uh, a pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, someone like a, with position, someone exactly, who had a position. Exactly. Uh, but I think I think uh, Paul had a heart for young men. Yes. For the young, because they could move. They 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 could. They were eager. They they were they had full passion. Yes. I'm not saying that that elder people don't have passion. Of course they do, but they could move. They mm -hmm. were always active. They were always on the move, so mm -hmm. that's that's why Paul chose, for example, Timothy. He was a such a young pastor yes. in one of the most difficult churches to pastor, which which Ephesus. Yes, which it was. You said it was the considered it was, a mega it was church, the, the first mega church, because Ephesus wasn't just a city; it was a whole province. Yes, so that maybe this young man who was already a minister, he was a a messenger. They don't. They never knew that he was heading to Paul mm -hmm. with an illness already. Yeah. Like we, I, I made, I made this. Uh, we can make this example, uh, Pastor. You you work for the postal for the post office, mm -hmm. right? You you work for the postal service. With, and and you know and you told me that even though you if you're, you feel a little bit sick, you still go to work, mm -hmm. but be, but you know that you can at any time you can say hey i'm feeling this this bad mm -hmm. i'm gonna go back home mm -hmm. you're gonna call your boss and everything yeah. he couldn't call back nope. home nope. he couldn't call t tell his boss hey i feel bad no yeah. he went sick mm -hmm. to paul to just to deliver the offering that the philippians had given to him that shows a lot of passion that shows that, a lot of commitment i think that, that was the reason why paul said you know please honor this yeah, man honor him. he yeah. was sick almost dying but anyway he kept with his work. Yeah, he kept doing it. Yes, so that that is what that is what uh, why Paul said you need to honor him. You know, give him the yeah. give him the honor that he yes. deserves. Right. So Paul assured them this was not the case. In fact, 
It was just the opposite. I preferred it to serve above and beyond the call of duty. Yeah. How important is that, Jorge, to it, serve above and beyond? It's all. It's what you want to do for God. You want to serve above and beyond. Like, even when I serve, I don't feel enough, but I'm still putting my best effort mm -hmm. forward. Like, it's going beyond, you know, my ability sometimes. I'm The effort that I put, whatever, I'm going to put my front foot forward because you want to give your best to God. Similar to any sacrifice that people used to give, it was always the best towards God. Right. So the mm -hmm. same way, you want to do the same thing. You want to do the best towards God. And and sometimes it's the best, sometimes it's above your best, and you and you won't even notice it. Right. That you're doing more than what you're than what you thought you could do. Absolutely. You know, there's something uh, I want to touch right now. Yeah. Because in the church, some people, because they don't feel good, in, and not really bad, but they don't feel good, they don't go to church. Mm -hmm. They don't serve in the church. Right. For some, you know, a little reason, ah, I'm not going to go to church today. I'm going to see it in the website, you know, in, in the internet. Or, you know, people just don't come to church. Mm -hmm. But this, this man, oh. he had to work, uh, you know, for the church, for Christ. And he, he went know, to church. He, he went. <laughs> he didn't think about himself. Yeah. He just did it. Yeah. And some people today, for a little reason, they don't come to church. No way. We need people like Epaphroditus. Mm -hmm. People that really love God. We need more Epaphroditus in the church. Yes. We need more of that. That will go serve above and beyond the call of duty. Yes. Right? So, because... For the work of Christ, mm -hmm. he came close to death. It was for the work of Christ that Epaphroditus came close to death, even though his work was mostly that of a messenger and not, not anything particular spiritual. It was still the work of God. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be a, a, a preacher or a teacher in order to do the work of God. Just by doing the coffee, you're doing the work of God. Yeah, I mean, it's hospitality. You're right. You, I mean, you're making them feel comfortable with right. God. Mm -hmm. You're not making them feel like they're being judged. You're being uh, friendly with them. And, they're, and that sometimes goes overlooked because, you know, everyone thinks either the message or the teaching or the worship mm -hmm. or whatever comes first. Mm -hmm. But the hospitality helps people stay in church. Because they're like, look. How, how you mm -hmm. treat them. Mm -hmm. Yes. How you treat them when they come in People right welcome through the door. The door. Yeah. Yes. They're like, I feel comfortable here. I could come here. I now feel judged. And a lot of people, when they come to church, they think. They're going to oh, judge they're, me. They're judging they're me. They're judging me, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I was hearing Pastor Pastor and you talk. And they're like, when a homeless man comes, people don't get near him. Yeah, oh, they sure, start yeah, judging sure, yeah. him and whatever. And the hospitality makes people want to come back mm -hmm. and sometimes it's just like one person like a father comes in by himself and is here at church he feels welcome he sees it he wants my one bring his family over and that's that's something that goes overlooked it's like sister dolly by just giving them the coffee brought in a whole family right and yes. that goes unnoticed and it doesn't matter what work you do yeah it really doesn't it could be from coffee it could be just prayer it could just be whatever mm -hmm. it may be any small help for the lord is good mm -hmm. and shouldn't go on you're still doing the work of god exactly yeah. you're putting your yourself out there and sacrificing yourself mm -hmm. and you're sacrificing your time yeah. to do something for right. god and that should like we said should not go unnoticed absolutely yes Th that that is that is what truly matters and like you said that should not be that should not go unnoticed not regarding his life, the willingness to put God's, the work of Christ first uh -huh. and his own personal safety and concern second displayed the noble heart of a friend. To God, he had passion for God. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, that's the way I can that's sum this up. That's the word, passion for Christ. He had, he had passion for Christ and he didn't, he didn't care about his own well-being. Mm -hmm. He wanted to get the work done and if he died, he will go with the Lord. Yes. But yes. he wanted to get the work done. <laughs> Right? So, in the ancient Greek, the phrase, not regarding his life, uses a gambler's word that meant to risk everything on the roll of the dice. Mm -hmm. Right? So, Paul wrote that for the sake of Jesus Christ, Epaphroditus 
was willing to gamble everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He risked all his life. He risked his life. He risked his he life and reputation, everything. He risked for, it all. Like he, like he, they gave absolutely everything. My Whatever question, effort he gave. My question to 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 us would be: Are we willing to risk everything for God? We should. It's easy to say yes, yes, Lord, we, I'm here. Mm -hmm. But when you're in the thing is when you are in that exactly <laughs> when you're in that situation, are you uh, are you That's sure? That's what I say. That's what I say. Uh, many people don't come to church, right? Because they're tired. Because like the pastor Tyler say, oh, the pastor didn't say hi to me, and they don't come back anymore. For many ridiculous things, people don't come back or they don't want to come. Yeah. But other thing is, it's when in this case. Epaphroditus, yes, it's giving me a hard time, his name. Uh, he put all his life, not thinking about, you know, feeling good. No, he was thinking about God, yeah. the gospel, the church, Paul, in the calling he had from God. We were talking about that, and, and you were listening to this, Jorge, that the primary example about risking it all is Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he left glory, he left his glory, his mm -hmm. throne, his power mm -hmm. to walk among men, to walk among his creation, and to die on a cross and sacrifice himself. And, sacrifice and himself. die for sinners. Yeah. Die for people that refuse him. Right. Die for people that spit on his face. Mm -hmm. Die for those that, uh, what's the word? Them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow, wow, yeah. wow, wow, hey, wow, lash <laughs> people that never deserve his. A song says that while he was, uh, it, it's an it's a Spanish song, it's in Spanish, but while he was going through all that pain, he was thinking about us. Yes, in his mind, we were there without, and my some people say, Well, he didn't know you at the time, he did know me. He had me in mind. That's why he went through all of that. You know, he was thinking about you, Jorge. He was thinking about you, Pastor. He was thinking about me. He was thinking about you, all those who are listening and mm -hmm. watching this. As he was carrying his cross, as mm -hmm. he was being nailed to his cross, as he was about to die, he was mm -hmm. thinking about you. Yes. Because he wanted to give you salvation. He wanted to give you a new life. He wanted mm -hmm. to give you an eternal life. Exactly. He wanted you to be with him and yes. he still wants you to be with him yes that's why he was willing to gamble it all yeah. to risk it all yes to ri risk to leave his glory to yes. live to all his riches and glories he left it all yes. his power his omnipotence you can say his throne he left it all yeah. to walk among his creation a limited he had he lived as a human yeah. we, we we said we said this he he lived as a human 100% human, 100% yes. God. But he didn't he didn't display his power nope fully. Yeah. He was just okay, I'm going to I'm just going to do this. Yes. But he displayed his full on power when he rose up again. Mm -hmm. When he resurrected. That's when he displayed his in a greater way now. In a greater way, and we can say that the word says that the Father exalted him yes. to the highest. Yes. He exalted them until the highest. So we should risk it all. Mm -hmm. And it's great to risk it all for Jesus. You know? So in the days of the early church, there were an, there was an association of men and women who were called who called themselves the gamblers. Taking from this same ancient Greek word used in, in not regarding his life. Mm -hmm. Why? It was their, their aim to visit the prisoners and the sick, especially uh, those who were ill with dangerous and infectious diseases, right? We know about the, the apostles. We know about the deacons. But sometimes you don't know about these people, the gamblers who decided to go to prisons, yeah. decided to go with the sick, risking their own lives, mm -hmm. right? So often when a plague struck a city, the heathen or the people through the dead bodies into the streets and fled in terror. They fled those cities because of the plague. But the gamblers buried the dead and helped the sick the best that they could. And so they risk their lives to show what? The, the love, love of Jesus. Jesus. Right? 
So Lightfoot says, it seems plain from this expression that Epaphroditus' illness was the coincidence. Consequence. Oh, sorry. Consequence. I'm sorry. Consequence not of persecution, but of overexertion. Right? He wasn't persecuted because, and then he became sick. No, it was it was because he was doing a lot. Yes. <laughs> Let's say he was exhausted. He was exhausted, maybe stressed. I yeah. need to get. Mal, I need to get malnourished. Whatever. Malnourished. Maybe he didn't eat. Yeah. But he was almost dying. <laughs> but his goal was his goal was to get. Dude, I mean, the work of God. Right. So to supply what was lacking in your service towards me, Epaphroditus did this by actually bringing the support that the Philippians gave. Mm -hmm. There was a lack in all the Philippians' generosity and good intentions until the gift finally made it. It made its way to Paul's need. We should, we should have the heart that there is something lacking in our service until the job is done. We should not be satisfied with good intentions or a half-done job or, in Spanish, a mediocre job. Mm -hmm. Yes. That, we is, that is half quality. Yeah. yeah. Very poor quality. Yeah. It, Low quality. It's giving your... Minimum. Le your least. That's it. You're yeah. giving your minimum yeah. on it because yes. that's, I mean, the minimum people do is like, oh, I came to church. I did my job. I'm but here. I'm here. I'm just here. I'm here. I, I, but there's I more check involved. In. <laughs> but there's more involved. It's like you're getting involved with the church. Right. Yes. Your tithes, your service, your time, your prayer. It's not, that's living a life full of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not just. I'm present. Yeah, you, but you said exactly. something. You said something or prayer, but getting it, getting in the word as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, you know, doing more, getting closer to God. Mm -hmm. yes. That's that's what it means to you. If you know that you're lacking in something, if something is missing in your heart, mm -hmm. you know you need to get to work and get more of that. Yes. If you if you know that you're lacking in reading the word, then read the word more. Mm -hmm. If you know that you're lacking in praying, pray more. Yes. If you know that. Uh, you're not fasting enough. Fast. Well, if you cannot fast because of a a, a certain condition, yeah. a certain condition, then don't fast. But you can fast of other things too. Yeah, and this is all I would I will say mm -hmm. is you should never feel feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Your job is not ever done. done. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. always something that you have to improve upon. If you think you are done, you start becoming very complacent and become right. mediocre. Yeah. You should not become that. You should be wanting to be like, I pray, I pray every day. Good. How about you pray maybe twice a day? <laughs> you, you're, but also, you, can read, you could read the Bible more. You can do a bunch of stuff more. In that regard, we say we pray every day, but sometimes we just pray a minute or two minutes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when God requires more. You know, give God more. Mm -hmm. Give God more time. I I remember that because didn't Jesus ask his disciples, "Can you can you stay up with me for an hour?" And they and they were with him. <laughs> they were with him, but they were asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Something like he said, "It's not only to say I'm present; it's be present and do something." Yeah. Do you know what the call? I mean, what God is calling you to do? Absolutely. And, and do it at the best. But also, don't don't think less of yourself. Oh no. Never, never think that. Never think that you're less, that you cannot fulfill God's work. You can... Like I said, mm -hmm. being fulfilled is not being low on your self-esteem or down mm -hmm. on yourself. You should never feel... feel you should want to want more fulfillment, mm -hmm. more growth, more right. understanding. Yeah. It, it sounds greedy, to be honest, to want more, to want more. But you want to... Learn more. You want to get better. You, that's what, you're never enough. That's what passion is all about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what passion is all about. You want more. And and you go to the one who can give you more. Mm -hmm. That's what If you're passionate for Christ, you will go to him every single day to get filled of him in order for you to do his work. Right? So, and the work is not done, Pastor. Never. It's not done. When it's done, that means we're already with him. Exactly. <laughs> Where he came and picked us up already, it means that, that the job like, is done. Like Jesus yeah. said in the cross at the yeah. end, it is done. Uh -huh. It is finished. Because, exactly, yeah. because it was, he went His to the end. His work was finished, yeah. Exactly. Right? 
He had fulfilled what he needed to do. He had fulfilled yeah. his purpose. Yeah. Yes. In 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 this world, in this in, in this in world, world. Yes. in this world, because he his purpose has <laughs> he, not he, ended yet. Yeah. No. It's not. It's not. It's not over. So with this, we reach the end of Philippians chapter two, and we will enter into Philippians chapter three, living law, and pressing on to Jesus, living which is the law, leaving, mm-hmm. leaving. Yeah. Yes, leaving. You said living. Leaving. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jorge. <laughs> Can we add this in the bloopers? No. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving, did I say that right? Okay. Yeah. Leaving law or the law and pressing on to Jesus, mm-hmm. right? So we just want to, and we reach the end of chapter two, but we will, we will be here next week for more. Of, we will start chapter three. But we want to thank Pastor Efren for joining us in, in this last section. In this last class that we had, I don't know if you want to join us for the next one. <laughs> if Why not? All right. Let's do it. All right. It, you, he, you will, he will join us for the next one. <laughs> Brother Jorge will be with me uh, until we I, Unless you guys don't want me here. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, uh, it, we were joking around that it was his debut in Farewell. But uh, he, did a, he did a good job. <laughs> it's he's a always, challenge he, for me to be he's here. He's always welcome. He's always, he's, you're always welcome, Pastor Efren. Thank you. Uh, so we want to thank you. Thank you for your prayers, for your support. Please share these classes. We don't do this for ourselves. We do this for you. We do this for all the people that want to learn more about Jesus, that want to grow in Jesus. And please, if you know about someone who wants to be like an Epaphroditus, we should like, and we should all aspire to be like Epaphroditus. Let us be like him because he was resembling, he showed a good example of how Jesus is. Yes. So let us all be like. Epaphroditus or attempt to be like Epaphroditus with those features because he was trying to be like Jesus. So let's try to be like Jesus, right? Amen. So with that being said, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jorge. Thank you, Pastor Efren. You. We wanna we also want to say a, a huge hello to our uh amazing sister Sonia. Yes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> our dear, dear yes. sister Sonia. <laughs> it's not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> But we and and also uh uh yeah I have no no more no more okay <laughs> may God bless you and we'll see you here next week for more to start chapter three of Philippians God bless you. Amen.